Hi there, I'm back with a new video and I'll be transitioning to 5.3 and I'd like to present new features at the same time. I'll tell you which features are 5.2 compatible and which are 5.3 only. For this episode, make sure you are on 5.3.2. It comes with fixes for crashes for things I present in this video. Since the version was not out yet at the time of filming, I've built the source myself from GitHub. I also want to tell you about the Git repository I set up for the tutorials so you can have the material I use for this video. The first episode is also there, I'll put the link in the description. For this episode, we'll see how we can use parameters to parameterize our graphs, and how we can do it even at runtime. Without further ado, let's get started. I created this map with a simple sculpted landscape, and I have a PCG volume that is covering the full map. You should recognize the graph that is inside, because it's almost the same as the first and second tutorials. Trees, rocks, and grass. You can go back to the corresponding videos if you need help to build this graph. I'll go through all the nodes so everyone knows my settings. So first the trees, we sample the landscape with x1075 and density 0.03. Then we add a random rotation on Z and we force absolute rotation to keep the trees straight on slopes and also scale randomly between two and four. And then spawn our trees. For the rocks, we have this first sampler of 0.0 run with extent of 50. The same thing, we do random rotation on Z with a scale of one and then we spawn our rocks. And for the grass, we have a density of 1 and extents of 7, then random rotation and scale between 0 0.2 and 0 0.7, and we spawn on grass with no collisions for it to be faster. All the values in the grass are hard-coded, and we want to see how we can change it to support parameters. So first of all, we want to control the density of our samplers, so we will add a new parameter, so you can go to graph settings and scroll to parameters, you can click the little plus to add parameters. So we'll add three float parameters. And I'll rename it tree density. And for the others, rock and grass density. And I will keep the value that I currently have in my sampler. So for trees, it's going to be to be 0.03, for the rock 0.01, and for the grass 1. To override a value on a node, you can click on the little arrow on the node to show the advanced pins and the parameters that are overridable. If you hover the pin, you will see the pin type and its exact name. In my case, it's a float and its exact name is points per square meter. In my case, I will use the get density tree node that was just added to the list since I added this parameter. And I will connect it to the points per square meter pin. And if I inspect the node, you can see that I have a parameter that has the value 0.03. And the setting on a node is now grayed out. So if I go back to my setting and change the density to 0.05, for example, it automatically applied the new value. If I put it back to 0.03, it returns to its previous state. So these parameters are shared by all the components that you see in this graph, but it can also be overridden directly on the component. So if I check this box, I can now change the value for this specific component and it will automatically regenerate. And if we go back to the inspection, you can see that it has the updated value for this component. And now I will do the same for rock and grass. And so I can now also override the grass density. If I change the value to 2, for example, we will have way higher density for grass. And if I want to reset my override, I can just uncheck the box. It will return to the previous value. And I will do the same for the tree. So this is a great way to design generic PCG graph and modify the value specifically for your component. So now let's play a bit for operation and for the scaling. So I will create three new parameters, tree scale, rock scale, and grass scale, and set them all to one. We can then use them to change the scale of our points. To do so, we can use a math operation. Uh, in 5.3, all the operations are present in the list, making it easier to find it what you're looking for. And we will go for multiply. What we want to do is we want to multiply the scale of our points by our parameter. So we'll plug first the points that we have. 
and we want to impact the scale. So you can click on the little plus and select the scale. You can see it will be total scale, meaning it's a scale of our points. And the second parameter is our new arguments, get tree scale, and you plug it into this second pin. We will use at last to select the latest attribute modified in our input. So if you go on the node and try to inspect it, you will see on the right that the last attribute modify is tree scale, the attribute that we just created. Note that the equivalent in 5.2 is none. And finally, our target will be our scale too. So we want to use dollar scale or add source. Add source will write back to the original parameter. In our case, it's dollar scale. If we inspect the multiply node, you can see that the scale has some values there. And so if I go back to my settings and change the value of my scale from one to two, you will see that the values will be changed to twice as much. Let's put it back to one for now. Disconnect the previous connection and plug our result from multiply. And so if I go back to my scene, then on my override, want to override the scale and put it to two, my trees will be twice as big. And if I remove the other right, they go back to the original values. I will do the same for the rock and the grass. Now let's tackle the meshes. We want to be able to change the meshes that we are spawning in our scene. So I'll go back to my settings, add three new properties, it will be tree mesh, rock mesh, and grass mesh to change the type. On 5.2, we only support soft object path. That is appeared in the list in 5.3 that will be fixed in the next release. And in 5.3, we can directly specify a specific class, like a static mesh reference. It can also be a soft object reference, which we'll be using because we don't support object reference set in Blueprint. What we will show later, it's something you forgot to add. So let's add them to our meshes. Now, for the static mesh partner to use those meshes, we need to assign an attribute to each of our points indicating which pane we should spawn. To do so, we can add the add attribute node on our point data. And add to it the parameter that we just created, tree mesh. If you inspect the node, you can see that it is a path to our mesh. So we will change the output name of our attribute and we call it mesh. And then if you inspect the node, you will see that all our points have a new attribute called mesh with the path. Then on the static mesh spawner, we need to change the selector from weighted to by attribute and specify the attribute that we want to use for spawning, which is attribute name and it's mesh in our case and plug it. And now you can see that the mesh is selected using our attribute instead of being outcoded in the node. And so if I go back to my settings and I change the mesh, it will automatically use the new mesh. And same thing, I will do it for rock and grass. One thing for the grass though, we want to change the template descriptor. So we will change the collision for all the meshes that we want to spawn from block all dynamic to no collision because otherwise it would be slower. All right, our graph is full parameterized with the density, scale and meshes. We can change those values on the go and see the results immediately. Let's go one step further and fully replace the graph with new meshes. I have these other assets with a more deserved vibe. Since my meshes are way bigger than the other, I will change the scale to 1 to 0 0.01. And then I will swap the meshes with the one that I have in my folder. So for the tree, I will use a cactus. For the rock, I'm going to use a skull. And for the grass, another type of grass.
And so now you can see that I have the same graph with a totally different scene with cactus, skulls, grass. When you are done with tweaking your values, you can go back to the component AU7 instance. It will be export instance in 5.2. It will open a prompt to save a new instance. So let's say just simple spawner oasis. And so now we have a new asset that is an instance of our pest graph and also contains all the overrides for this specific instance. Let's reset all the overrides on my component to go back to my forest. And I can drag and drop my new instance and it will automatically switch to the overrides that we had. I can add more overrides for this specific component. So if I change the tree scale, I can reduce by half the size of my cactus for this specific component. And so if I clean up my volume and drag and drop both graphs instance, you can see that I have one that is will be my oasis and if I drag my forest, I will have my forest. So let's delete them and regenerate our big volume. Now that we have two graphs, let's see how we can switch them at runtime. So let's create a new blueprint that we will call Graph Swapper. We will create a new function that we will call Swap Graph Instances. And we will also add new variables, so we will need to store the PCG component as a hard reference. Then we will create two instances for our graph. So we will run one that will be a PCG graph. It will be your forest. And one that will be a graph instance. And it will be our OSIS graph. And we also need to create an index to know at which graph we are currently. So it will be an integer. And we save and compile. And then for a forest graph, we will drag and drop a forest graph. And for the oasis, we will do the oasis. Then in a construction script, we will try to gather the PCG component. So what we'll do is that we will try to find all actor of class PCG volume. Then try to find the PCG component from it. And store it into our variable. And now for my swap graph instance, I will mark it call in editor so I can call it directly from the editor. Then I will add some logic to increment the index every time we call the function, do a modulo 2, and then switch between 0 and 1. Then I will use the PCG component and call the function setGraph. So if the index is 0, we want to set our forest. Then we add another set graph function. And if the index is 1, we set our oasis. And I also forgot to set the index back. So after the operation, we need to set the index to its new value so we can keep track of it. So if I add my BP actor in my world, you can see that I have a button swap graph instances and if I click on it, it will swap the instances. It automatically regenerates in editor because when we change the graph, we have a callback that will say regenerate. But we don't have this callback at runtime, so we need to force the regeneration. So what we'll do is we will take our PCG component and we call generate local on it. There is also a generate call. It's a replicate call, but we don't need it in this case. So we're going to do just generate local. And so after each set graph, we're going to force a regeneration. We need force because it was already generated. And if this 
boolean is false, it will not regenerate if it was already generated. To trigger it at runtime, we're going to use an input. So we're going to event begin play and we're going to listen to player controller inputs. And then if we press the zero key, we're going to call our swap graph instances function. Let's go in Py to test it out. I'm here, and if I press the zero key, it switches. I press it back, it re-switches back. But let's also try it out in a cook build. So here I have the cook build. And if I press the zero key, it will swap the graphs. And I cancel it back to my forest. So everything we saw here works in 5.2, but now let's dive into the new features of 5.3. So what we can do is we can change the graph parameters directly from Blueprint. So I go back to my PP and I will create two new functions that will also be called in editor. One that be the generate forest and the one that will be generate oasis. Set our parameter, we will take a PCG component, then we will get the graph instance. And then on the graph instance, we want to set a parameter. In our case, we'll start with the scale, so we'll set a float parameter. We want our scale to be 1, and it will be the tree scale. And we do the same with rock scale and grass scale. And for our meshes, we'll create a new variable that will be static mesh as a soft object reference, that will be an array. And we call it meshes. Then we add our six entries, our six meshes, and we will set all of them. And so on the graph instance, we will call set soft object parameter and we'll do it for the tree mesh. Then take our array, get the first value, which is our forest tree, and set it. Then we do the same for the rock mesh and grass mesh. And when all is done, we want to get our PCG component and call generate local. Same thing, we want to force it and we're good to go. So I will copy all the nodes and paste them into generate oasis. And in that case, we want to change the scale to 0.01 for all scales. And for the meshes, we change the indexes in the array. I go back in my scene, on the graph wrapper actor, I have two buttons, generate forest, generate oasis, and if I click on generate oasis, I have this new set of parameters that is applied, and in generate forest, we apply the previous parameters. So here my all my values are hard coded, but they can definitely be gameplay driven. So now we need to change it at runtime. So we'll go back to our event graph and we'll bind our generate forest function to the one key and the generate oasis to the two key. And while I'm at it, I will add a new function that will be randomize the seed. Randomize seed. And we'll just get the PCG component and set the seed on it. 
And to set the seed, we will just create a random stream. I will put it to a very big value. And same thing, we just call generate local on it with the force option. And I'll go back to my event graph and bind the function to the three key. Okay, let's try it at runtime. I will start a Pi session. And if I press two key, I get the oasis. If I press one key, I get the forest back. And if I press the three key, I get another distribution of points with a new seed. And it will also work at runtime in a cook build. So let's start a cook build. Now I am in my cook build. And so same thing, if I press the two key, I get the oasis. If I get, press the one key, I get the forest back. And if I press the free key, I get another distribution of points. And with that, you just saw how you could parameterize your graph to reuse it or change values at one time. I hope it was useful and I see you in the next one. In the meantime, have fun with the plugin. Take care.